One of the most stressful period of my own road to the UK was during the period when I had to apply for UK visitor visa to come to the UK uh, to take PLAT2 exam. And I think a lot of international medical graduates are on the same boat as me. There's a lot of uncertainty that hangs above your head when you're trying to look forward in your career. And in this video, we are going to discuss the five top mistakes that are done by international medical graduates when they apply for their visa and how to avoid them. If this is the first time you're checking out our channel, welcome. Basically what we do is we run a website that's totally free known as roadtouk.com and it will explain the ins and outs about everything related to the United Kingdom and what it takes for you to work as a doctor in the NHS. So if you've not already, please stalk us on all of our social media. Find us on Facebook, find us on Twitter, Instagram, and of course, YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe. Hi everyone, my name is Ibrahim. I'm one of the internal medicine trainees working in NHS. Uh, and at the very start of the video, I want to give some declaration that all the things I'm going to discuss today in this video are completely views of my own. So uh, it's my understanding of the immigration rules and some experiences from other people who made mistakes in their application, had their visa application refused and went ahead and applied again. So whatever you take from this um, video today, take it with a grain of salt uh, and apply your own understanding in this application as well. Because I remember when I applied for visa application, uh, I tried to find different sources and I asked pe different people around and they told me, oh no, this is not going to work, but it did work. So there might be some element that I'm telling you this is not going to work, but it might work. So the whole convoluted way, what, what I'm trying to say is, it's your responsibility to understand the visa application and make your application that way. All I'm trying to give the message is very common mistakes that are done by many international medical graduates and my understanding of how to not make them. So let's start with the first mistake. The first mistake is having discrepancies between your online application and cover letter. I have had many international medical graduates who thinks that the cover letter that they're writing summarizing their whole application process is the main application. No. So your online application is the main application. Whatever you fill up online, and there's a question after question, that alone has to explain and satisfy uh, all the questions related to your visit. How, how, what's your status, employed or unemployed? How much do you make? How much do you spend? Uh, if there is anyone who will be supporting uh, in this visit financially, how much they will be supporting? So you see, your online application has a plethora of questions, which is enough to explain everything related to your visa. And the cover letter can act as an appendix or a supporting document, not necessarily as the main application where you go your heart out explaining everything. Chances are that cover letter, if you do it like four, five, six, seven, eight pages, I have even heard of doctors who write 20 pages of cover letter explaining their whole life story to the entry clearance officer, how they really want to come to the UK and how they want to take this PLAP2 exam and a lot. And that's completely unnecessary. All you need to provide if you're providing a cover letter is something that you need, you think that you need further explanation, uh, that uh, the itinerary you want to give it a bit more detail or a bit more explanation on your personal circumstances, where you stand and where you look forward and why do you want to come, and that's it. So remember, your online application bid is the main application. You have to make sense completely of your personal circumstances in your country and also the circumstances surrounding the visit there. The second mistake is providing incomplete evidence or even the opposite side of the spectrum, providing excessive documentary evidence, which is not necessary. So it's really difficult to say what would be the balance between these two. So my 
message through this video would be whatever you state on your online application say if you are an employed then you have to provide some evidence of that employment you have to provide some verifiable evidence of that employment if you claim that you make some amount of money you have some savings you have to provide evidence of that savings if you claim that you're not employed then there is no evidence needed but if you claim in your personal circumstances that you are currently not employed but you have been employed for the last five years and you are actually going abroad with your own money then you cannot just say i am unemployed but i have this amount of money in my bank account then the evidence will not suggest that if you're not employed how did you get that money in your bank account and you're supporting yourself right now so you see you have to find a logical explanation of your circumstances and provide evidences so in that case i'm not employed right now but i have my money so you have to explain how do you have that money so your previous employment details how much did you get paid and all those things comes into question then so how do you have this money under your name but you state in your online application you are not employed so you see there has to be a logical explanation of what you're providing as an evidence and what you state in your application and that is one of the biggest reason that a lot of visa gets reviews that failure to explain personal circumstances and I think all you have to do is make sense of your application, what you're saying, and provide documentary evidence sufficient to prove that claim. Now let's move on to the third common mistakes, failure to explain financial circumstances. So a lot of people are with the idea that if I can show a bank statement that I have like, you know, millions of uh, my currency in this bank account and I have access to it, why will I not be able to go? So why will I not be able to just go because I have access to this money and that's it, that should be enough because I'll be spending this money and come back. Unfortunately, it's not that plain and simple. The thing is, in order to give you the permission to come to this country, the visa I authority has to make sure that the financial standing on which you are asking to enter to the UK is firm. So it's not just about having money in your bank account. It's the other financial circumstances. So if you are sponsoring yourself in that case, if it's your own money, then how did you obtain that money? Do you have any dependents that you have to pay for? How much your monthly expenditure? So if you use this money, how will your financial standing be? So it's not about just having the money. It's also about how did the money accumulate? How, how was the money obtained? What was the process of obtaining the money? And a lot of visas get refused because um, uh, in most of the cases, the doctors who come to take club to ask and get a sponsorship. And that is perfectly okay. And to be honest, the sponsor does not even have to be a blood relative in that sense. It does have to have only some sort of professional or personal relationship with the uh, the applicant that if you can explain that this is my uncle who uh, is agreeing to sponsor me because he has been really close to me since I was a kid this kind of explanation also works as long as the other party also agrees and provides a letter of support that I am willing to support I am this person this is my name this is my address this is my contact details and I'm willing to support this gentleman or this person to go to the UK with this amount of money. I have this regular income, I have this many dependents, and even with the dependents, I am affluent enough or I have the money enough to support a visitor for this person to go to the UK and come back, and I'm happy to do it. So you see, it's not about having a chunk or pot of money in a bank account for six months or 12 months. It also is about the financial standing of the person who is sponsoring your visit and also your financial standing. So that is also one of the other thing that is overlooked and I want to say this in this vein that your financial standing is also important because you're spending money to come to the UK and you'll be spending money while you'll be staying here. The, this is very crucial because they want to establish that when you come here to the United Kingdom you not have to recourse to public fund or anything of that sort and you have the money on yourself to support your visit to the United Kingdom. 
So if you don't, that means you have to provide a valid sponsor who has the financial standing to support your application. Mistake number four, failure to explain your plan. So don't take it the way that you have to have everything booked. So upon reading all the visa guidances on um, UK websites and UKVI website, they don't encourage you to book everything ahead. And to be honest, hotel bookings, airline bookings, and all the other things does not necessarily uh, ascertain that that is your plan. What they're looking for, in my understanding, is your intention of the period that you stated in your online application that you're going to stay in the United Kingdom. It could be 65 days. It could be uh, whatever the duration that you are, you, you're saying that you are going to stay in the UK on your application has to be accounted for in your plan. So what do you want to do? So if you say that I'm coming to the UK uh, for uh, taking a PLAP2 exam, which is a one day exam, and you want to stay for three months and, and add no other explanation in your itinerary what you're going to do, that why you want to come two months ahead of the exam, why you want to stay one month after the exam, and there is no explanation added to this application, then why do you think they would think you are a genuine visitor? So if you're coming for a one-day exam and you want to stay three months, you have to explain why. You, and, and a lot of uh, doctors on the internet may disagree with me that, you know, uh, I have explained um, uh, that I want to take a PLAP2 preparatory course and that was the reason that uh, my visa was refused. But upon further questioning, a lot of the times what uh, comes about is that they have made a major error in their online application. When it is asked, that are you being invited by any uh, educational institution or anything of that sort to come to the UK? And a lot of the doctors say yes and mention their academy or preparatory course. To be honest, they're not inviting you to come to the UK. So when you make that claim in your visa online application that yes, this academy is inviting me to come to the UK, now they check in the record whether this academy has the authority to apply or or invite you to come to the UK, and they don't. So these companies are not established uh, educational institution who can invite you to come to the UK. So in that question, your answer would be no. They are not inviting me to come. Rather, if I go there, I am taking their course to help me prepare for the exam. And that course is never more than 30 days. So the course itself is less than 30 days, where I will be studying or exercising or like, you know, understand the exam pattern and practice. And there will be a pe period where I will self-practice or it's a self-driven practice. And then I'll take this exam. As, as this exam is a major exam in my career, I want to take it with as much preparation as I need. And that's why I co I'm coming this many days early to do all of this. So you see, you have to give explanation. And also and, uh, after uh, the exam, the the most it makes sense is to just come back so you can uh, stay the, after the exam i'll stay a uh, one week or so uh, to look around london or the other cities visit some areas historical places and come back to my country and that makes the most sense so you see this number four mistake is failure to explain your itinerary or your uh, uh how you will utilize the time that you said in your application that you're going to stay in the United Kingdom. So the final common mistake is funds parking. So the name suggests that you basically park the money or park the fund in your bank account. So it also uh, uh, happens in, in various occasions where it can be explained. Like for example, if the income of your sponsor is of that nature that there is a huge transaction happening in and out of their account, uh, and that is the nature of their business, that is the nature of their earning, then you can explain that, that this, this, this major transaction that happened three months ago is secondary to this, and this is what happened, because in bank statement, it will clearly say where the money came from, so you can explain it that way. So if something like that exists in the bank statement, there's a major transaction which either entered into your account or left your account, you have to explain that. 
Otherwise, it may seem like that the money just came in and you put it there so that it shows a lot when you applied for your visa. And there is a lot of other people who are with the opinion that should I transfer all this money to my account and show that is, this is my brother, this is my mother or father has actually given me this money to go. I think that is a wrong approach because yes, they, are, they can be sponsored. They don't have to transfer the money to your account. I'm sure there could be many people with different opinions there, but I think that it's always best to not have money under your name if you didn't earn it in any way possible. So it's better whoever is the sponsor to have the money in their account and they actually sponsor you with a sponsorship letter with their bank statement explaining their financial circumstances that I am related or I am willing to sponsor this gentleman for the UK visit and this is my documentation of my financial circumstances. Fun sparking, avoid. There you have it, the top five mistakes that are uh, done by international medical graduates when they apply for their visa to the UK in order to take club two. Uh, the, the, we have a lot of articles written uh, around this topic and I think this was the initial articles of our Road to UK blog and I would advise you to go through them and at the same time read through the comments. We have in, in some of the articles we have more than 200 comments so there might be some situation that you're facing that has already been answered by uh, someone who has faced the same situation in the comments. We have another platform uh, which is Road to UK Forum. We have a dedicated category for UK visa. Uh, please do ask your question there if you have any specific question or just look through the questions that was asked there and uh, your question might have been answered. That's all for today. If you have not subscribed to our channel already, please do subscribe and click the bell icon to get notified whenever we're out with a new video. Um, follow us on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Uh, we send out amazing newsletter containing the relevant things that are happening around international medical graduates in the United Kingdom. Do subscribe to our newsletter and obviously join our forum. See you next time.